Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to make the case to you guys why Arena is better than Constructed Play in Hearthstone. Of course, this is my own personal opinion, you're welcome to have another one if you prefer Constructed Play, that's perfectly fine, but there are some good reasons why I prefer to go with Arena Play, generally speaking. So, first off, in Arena every deck is going to be unique. It is impossible to go ahead and copy the best deck from online, because in Arena, well, there are definitely cards that are better to put in your deck, but because you're only given three options for each card, every deck is going to look different. Um, I, I don't know what the odds on actually getting the exact same Arena draft are, but I'm sure it's easier to get struck by lightning or something like that. So you're always playing with a different deck, and that does keep it fresh and interesting compared to when you are playing... Um, a very standardized matchup, like something like, uh, let's just say, Pirate Warrior versus Elemental Shaman, and you know exactly how it's going to go, and you know exactly what cards are in the opponent's deck. It can easily get stale. Um, and to build on top of that point, you can net deck tier lists in Arena, but you cannot net deck uh, the actual deck. Uh, yes, you can compare or like, let's just think back to the past. As you were Drake, a great card. So you would always take as you were Drake over some other crappy rare, like um, I don't know what's a bad rare or mediocre rares, like Crazed Alchemist maybe. Crazed Alchemist actually not that bad, but that's good than as you were Drake, of course. Um, so and, and even when you do look at those uh, approximate tier lists in terms of which card to draft, they don't even hold up in 100% of cases. Because let's say that you've already drafted three Azure Drakes. Do you really want a fourth one if it means that the curve of your deck is going to be incredibly slow? Um, there's actually a real choice to be made there, because if you make your arena deck too slow, then it's going to fall flat on its face. And if you make it too fast, then uh, there's a good chance you'll just run out of steam uh, if you don't have any extra card draw. Uh, card draw Actually, one of those things I think is a little bit overrated in Arena, because often you can finish a game um, just by playing out your initial hand plus the cards you draw. That's fun back there. Um, okay, so next up, the matches tend to be less predictable, and this does tie into the whole, uh, you get three choices for every card point of Arena, which is basically what separates the two things. But your matches are going to be less predictable, because you have no idea what your opponent's playing, unless you just played against them and you're going for, like, your 11-2 match or something like that. Um, but, although every deck is going to be a little bit different, there are still going to be certain cards which are very important to play around. So, Mage is still really popular in Arena, and this is, of course, on Goro Patch. So every mage likes to take Meteor. I I think I literally ran into four mages in a row that all drafted Meteors. So because people like to take Meteor, because obviously it's a good value card, you do play around that even though you don't know for certain whether or not they have a Meteor in their deck. So there's still these cards you play around, there's still an element of skill, there's still an element of knowing the Arena metagame if you actually want to get to high uh, win rates and high scores in Arena. So it might be less predictable, but it doesn't mean there's no element of skill. And I would argue maybe there's even more elements of skill there because there's no guide on exactly how each match is supposed to play up, uh, play out. No one knows exactly how, um, like the four meteor mage is supposed to fight the hunter with four Galaka crawlers or something like that. It's, um, I mean, you would have an idea, but it's not clear cut. Okay, uh, so next up, cheap players, or free-to-play players, uh, who don't like to spend a lot of money on the game, or haven't been playing since beta, uh, can still be held equal to people who spend a lot of money on the game, or are willing to shell out lots of cash. Because every deck is generated um, basically with equal chances of getting good cards for all players who enter, and yes, sometimes you get bad cards, sometimes you get really good drafts, but it doesn't matter... If you were a Legend player, it doesn't matter if you're a Rank 20 player. Um, your odds of getting the good cards in your deck are equal. Um, so it's it's really a good equalizer, because as long as you have the skill, you can make it an arena. It doesn't matter how much money you've put into the game. Uh, you just have to know the cards. You have to know kind of how it's supposed to play out. And you have to be able to read a board and see which value trades you should be making. 
Okay. Um, also, and very unique to Arena, is that there's the chance for cards that normally are bad to actually be pretty good or at least playable. Um, so, because it's not constructed, um, decks like Super Aggro Hunter or uh, Pirate Warrior aren't going to appear in the same quantities. So often the arena metagame gets slowed down a little bit, which does change the dynamics of how things work a lot. It also makes it so that if you do draft the super aggro deck, you catch a lot of those greedy players off guard. Um, but then you also have uh, certain... Let's just say you were given three mediocre rares, um, but you happen to know that people like to draft taunts in arena. Uh, taunts being pretty popular right now. So you might grab something like the... Uh, I forget what it's called, like the Hog Rider, the 5-5 Hog Rider that gains charge if your opponent has a taunt minion. That is actually a surprisingly decent minion to put in an arena deck. Now, it's not competitive enough, really, to make it into a constructed deck, but because you might be offered three decent choices rather than three amazing choices, um, it does allow those less amazing cards to be played. So a good example of this would be the Doctor 3 card. Uh, it's called Vicious Pterodax or something like that. So it's a 3-3 for 3 mana that when it hits your, an opponent in the face, uh, it gets to adapt. And sometimes you can get Wind Fury as the adapt and adapt twice a turn and easily just shut out a game. Um, but in my experience, trying that card out in constructed play, people just usually have too much removal for it. Every deck kind of uh, has those cards to survive the early game. But in Arena, that's not always the case. Sometimes you can get off those sick plays where you just destroy them because they didn't build a deck with good early game. They played too greedy, and now they get punished. Um, so things like that can happen, and uh, it, it, it really brings some of those decent or mediocre cards to life, and uh, it's a fresh take on the game in a way. So, um, kind of favoring the playstyle I like, uh, there's more chances for slower decks to basically be played out in Arena and not get run over completely, because on average, uh, the decks are a little bit slower in Arena, though not as slow as they used to be. Um, you can do things like draft a pretty greedy deck, like a couple Flame Strikes or uh, Firelands Portal, or if you're Shaman, um, I don't know. It, Put in a Volcano, these control cards um, that can kind of win you the value in the late game. So being able to play a little bit slower, not having to necessarily worry about dying on turn 5 or 6, um, it, it is a nice change from Constructed, because in Constructed, if you play control, you're always worried about dying immediately. Um, but in Arena, sometimes you do have the chance to go play those slower decks. That said, I do like to punish people who go and play those slower decks by just tempoing them out of the game, and I find that hilarious. Um, so yeah, the, I mean, in, in Arena, because the game is a little bit slower, it also makes aggro play a little bit better because people expect it less. So it's an interesting dynamics going on there. Um, and uh, I think one of the things I really like is that boring and obvious synergies, or I would say constructed strategies in general, are rarely churn out that good in Arena. So if you're really sick of Jade Golem decks or Dragon Priest or, uh, I, I don't know, like Elemental Shaman or just those really generic decks that are so obvious in how they work that anyone could build them, um, when people try to build those decks in Arena, they usually fail. So you have, it, it incentivizes you to actually just think of more kind of generic synergies. Like if you're a rogue, Maybe you draft the 5-mana uh, the five mana 4 six Spectral Knight because it gives your weapons plus 2 attack and you have that dagger. Now, you wouldn't put a Spectral Knight in your deck in Constructed because it's usually not good enough, but it can actually be quite good in Amina. So if you think about more basic, less great, greedy uh, synergies that aren't bad, but just don't compete with the boring put all the dragons, all the Jade Golem cards in your deck strategies from Constructed... Um, it allows you to experiment with things that are different and more interesting that the average player probably wouldn't see as much. Um, which is, I think it's kind of weird though, in a way, because it's like, wow, the really good synergies, um, players can kind of catch on to those really quick where they see one good player do it and then everybody's doing it and then they're like, wow, I'm an awesome dragon priest. I'm so good at this game. Um, 
But then it's like those little less obvious things that uh, kind of make things better. Like, let's say you have some high attack minions in your deck, and then you you draft a crazed alchemist, and it swaps the attack from an offensive high damage to high health, and it allows you to trade better. Those are the kind of things I, I think a lot of new players wouldn't really think about nearly as much. Um, but they might think, oh, put all the jade golems in your deck to be really good, because they obviously more jade golems means it's better, which is pretty lame. Uh, I, I thought jade golems would be cool, but I actually kind of hate them now. I think everybody does. Um, okay, so yeah, that's basically my list there for the reasons I prefer Irina to Constructed. Obviously, there's still a place for Constructed play. Um, if you do like having those highly planned out matchups where it's not so much about creating the most creative deck, but rather playing what's good and knowing how the matchups interact, or maybe you're interested in professional play, then obviously Constructed still has a place um, and then there's also a place for wild when you do want to experiment with different cards that people maybe not see coming just because there's so dang many cards in wild. Uh, but for me, I think arena's probably more fun, uh, at least at this point in time, than constructive play. But once again, just my opinion. So I've been Dark Skeleton. Thanks for watching, uh, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future video content.